Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. I'm an American, all right? But I like to learn about history. Your YouTube recommendations, and I'd love for you to join the channel. My name is Connor. Nice to meet you, <laughs> sir, madam. All right, yeah, I love you to oh, join the Discord. Subscribe, but more importantly, join the Discord. Link at the top description below. This is the uh, second and last part of the, although there was one kind of e earlier, like 1940 episode of the Eastern Front. I was kind of um, expecting them to include a bit of uh, <clears throat> maybe the Battle of Britain and stuff, but I guess that's not technically the Eastern Front. So, uh, yeah, in uh, original video, the top description below. Oh, John Tyler right here. The random historical figure. Um, get this. John over here, Johnny boy. He, his grandson is still alive. Take that in. Call me full of crap. Go ahead. Well, hold on. Let me get display up. He was born in 1790. He has a grandchild, not a great grandchild, a grandchild who is still alive grandchildren uh, i think harrison is still alive he's 92 years old so that means that john tyler the president who is the 10th president of the united states all right that's crazy how his grandson is still alive so he he had like a a kid like a, he had a child um, when he was like 72 and then his son had a child when he was like 80 or something like that and now the grandson is, is now 92 years old I think that's crazy all right sorry to uh, go off topic there but yeah Johnny boy is uh, joining us let's get right into it all the stuff I said before join the discord subscribe love to have you there um, let's do it East three great channel Let's do it. Let's make sure everything is Today, going right. we're going to look at the last six months of World War II. Oh, wow. See, that's why good thing I checked. Okay. Sorry. On the Western Front. Today, we are going to look at the last six months of World War II on the Western Front. But before that, a brief message from our sponsor. Improve Make that money, man. The us. It sound milky. And now, if you think how do I, I get an ad blocker? Someone said you can get an ad blocker or something. You guys are just gonna have In to the sit room with us. Get back to World War Two. In the second part of 1944, Germany had suffered its worst defeat yet. The Soviet forces had advanced up to the German border. In the west, the Allies had landed in France and moved up to the German frontiers. The Raid Army and the Allies were preparing to launch a final offensive into Germany in early 1945. The Western Allies planned to carry out smaller attacks before the border. In the west, the Allies had landed Sorry. in France. I really gotta pay attention, okay? I have major ADD, my attention span is so small, I, I just, I have to... France ...advanced up to the German border. In the west, the Allies had landed in France and moved up to the German frontiers. The Raid Army and the Allies were preparing to launch a final offensive into Germany in early 1945. The Western Allies planned to carry out smaller attacks before the offensive. Their goal was to break through the German defenses of the Siegfried Line and the Rhine River. They planned to do that with attacks in the north and south. In the south, the German position was weak. The Allies first encircled Metz, Battle and after the that, they broke through the German lines and reached the Rhine. The Germans had to retreat. In the north, they pulled back to the secret line, where they stopped the Allies. In the south, they consolidated their forces in a smaller area to tie up more of the Allied forces. At the same time, 
they had also launched their attack in the north. They had already broken through the secret line and planned to cover the remaining land to the Rhine. They had already broken through the secret line and planned to cover the remaining land to the Rhine. The Germans were better prepared to defend against the northern attack. The Allies launched the attack in mid November, but the progress was slow. The Germans sent reinforcements to the sector and denied any opportunity to make a breakthrough. By mid December, the Allies had achieved only limited gains. The Germans knew that in order to avoid defeat, they needed to go on an offensive. Therefore, they decided to use their last limited forces to launch an attack on the Western Front. They were unable to gather an overwhelming force and instead hoped to catch the Allies off guard. The Allies were attacking in the north Here. and the south. Between them was an area which was known as the Ardennes, which was held... This is where they broke through to uh, eventually um, reach Dunkirk. Uh, so they just tried the same plan again. ...by the Allies. The Germans planned to pass through the Ardennes before the Allies could bring up reinforcements and then move to the sea and cut off a large part of Allied troops. The German attack was divided into the supporting offensive in the south and the main offensive in the north. In the main sector, only the southernmost attack could break through. The Allies then brought up their first reinforcements and halted the German breakthrough. The German northern attack had failed. In the south, the Germans broke through the Allied lines on a wide front. The Allies rushed in an airborne division to hold the important road junction of Bastogne. The Germans bypassed it and continued their advance. However, their advance had been too slow and the Allies began to arrive in force to the sector. The Germans consolidated their forces in the northern direction to continue the advance, but by that time the Allies launched an attack from the south and re-established connection with Bastogne. In order to divert the Allies away from the Ardennes, the Germans launched an attack in the south. The Allies were now faced with the dangers of the Germans resuming the Ardennes offensive and with their southern attack. The offensive in the Ardennes was more dangerous for the Allies and they concentrated their efforts there. So was I wrong? Is this not the Battle of the Bulge? They launched a two-pronged attack against the German salient. The German units were threatened with encirclement and were forced to pull their forces back to a more secure location. With the Allied position in the Ardennes more secure, they could now send troops against the southern attack. At the same time, the Allies had been giving ground to the Germans, but the arrival of Allied reinforcements from the Ardennes helped to halt their advance. With the immediate danger taken care of, the Allies decided to secure their position in this sector by destroying the German pocket around Colmar so that the Germans could not use it for launching future attacks. The Germans did not have the strength to hold the pocket and they were pushed over the Rhine. By that time, the Red Army had finished preparations and launched its main offensive in the east. The Red Army quickly advanced encountering limited resistance. Soon their forces were coming near Berlin. With this new danger, the Eastern they Front became Berlin the main first. priority for the Germans and they moved away some of their troops from the Western Front. The Germans now switched to full-on defensive in the west and their forces retreated to the secret line. By that time, the Allies had built up their supplies and forced... Gotta give credit to the Russians, man. Um... The most horrific fighting of all is undoubtedly in the Eastern Front. And... I think they do get their due. I think most people acknowledge the losses they made and, and the, the contribution, the, the probably largest contribution to the war effort was from Russia. Just wanted to say that. ...is to launch a massive attack on the Western Front. They would capture the Western Bank of the Rhine first from the north and then from the south. After that, they would cross the Rhine in two locations and then capture the Ruhr, which housed large parts of German war industry. The Germans were strongly outnumbered, but they were ordered to avoid retreat and hold their positions. The Allies started their northern attack in early February. In the south, the Germans made use of rough terrain and were able to contain the Allied advance. In the center, the Germans had opened the dams on the Roar River, creating a temporary flood which prevented the Allies from crossing it. With the central part of the front quiet, they were able to gather enough forces to contain the Allied advance in the north. But then the water levels in the Roar dropped and the Allies crossed the river. 
The Germans were unable to hold them off and were pushed back, suffering large casualties. They retreated over the Rhine, destroying the bridges behind them. The Allies then turned south, the German lines collapsed and they lost half of their strength as prisoners. In the chaos, the Allies were able to capture an intact bridge over the Rhine at Remagen. They established a bridgehead over the river. The Allies moved in to capture the last German-controlled area west of Rhine. The Germans were somewhat able to contain the Allied attack from the south, but in the north, the Allies advanced through the German lines with little opposition. The Germans began a belated retreat, but a lot of their soldiers were taken prisoner. In the confusion, the Allies were able to cross the Rhine in several places. By that time, the Allies had finished their preparations for the northern Rhine crossing. The Germans were unable to resist it, and the Allies established themselves on the east shore. The German decision not to allow retreat over the Rhine had proven to be disastrous. They had lost 300,000 men as prisoners alone and were now unable to defend the Rhine River defenses. One thing I've learned is that, you know, being a novice of war history and combat history, is that retreating is sometimes a tactical decision. It's not just what you must do because you blundered. So that's... The Allies now set out to neutralize the German war industry. Koblenz. In That's where we went. Uh, we were actually, me, my dad, and my brother, because we went to this part of it where, like, no one ever goes. This is off topic a little, but a little story. Um, when we were traveling through Europe, and we actually ended up on the front page of a newspaper in Koblenz. If it wasn't the front page, it was one of them, because my dad had a, got the phone number of one of the guys that was there. And he sent him a picture of it, and so that's pretty cool. Uh, if I if I find the uh, photo of it, I'll uh, I'll bring it and show it on um, on stream, or on on stream on uh, on the video. Uh, yeah, so we just got very uh, drunk at some bar, and they were they're like, "Oh, are you English?" And we're like, "No, we're American." I'm like American, uh, that was a lot of fun. And they would give us free shots. Me and my brother, whoever could learn one to ten in German. Ooh, can I still remember it? <clears throat> Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, fünf, sex, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. That was pretty good, right? Sorry. Rhine River defenses. The Allies now set out to neutralize the German war industry in the Ruhr. The Allies moved east, which made the Germans overextend their defenses. The Allies then turned north and outflanked them. At the same time, they broke out of the northern bridgehead, and soon both of the Allied forces linked up and encircled the Germans in the Ruhr. Most of the German forces in the area had That's been a big encirclement. That's the biggest encirclement I've ever seen. ...put in the pocket, and the way into Germany was open. The Allies advanced east. Large areas of Germany fell to the Allies with little opposition. The Germans still had significant forces around Berlin. Part of them were sent to block the Allied advance, but they were too few and were encircled and destroyed. The Allies established a defensive line along the Elbe River. Then the Germans had to concentrate on repelling the raid army's attack on Berlin. By that time, the German resistance on the Western Front was collapsing, but they still had strong forces on other fronts and the a question. There was absolutely no cavalry in World War II, correct? I know there was some in World War I, but had they just been completely obsolete by um, the com internal combustion engine and just uh, jeeps and, and um, you don't need them for uh, communication anymore, but just in terms of like routing and scouting, were they ever used in the major... Uh, Major powers? There was the danger that the Germans could pull their forces into the Alps and make a final stand. The Allies turned south in order to reach the Alps before the Germans could set up strong defensive positions there. However, in reality, the Germans had no intentions in making a final stand in the mountains and after the fall of Berlin had removed Hitler from power, their new government surrendered unconditionally in early May. Now, with the war over, I would like to mention the officers and enlisted men of the E Company for staying with me through the campaign all the way from landing beaches of Normandy to the foothills of the Alps. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to participate on a much longer journey, check out the videos on the Eastern Front on the right 
or click for an algorithm recommended video on the left. Ooh, 1940. I should do that one too. I've already seen the Eastern Front ones. Go check them out. Great channel. Really great channel. Uh, you guys seem to like it a lot too. Um... I love the war image, the the battle images from the map. Um, really gives you a. I like to know more about the geography. I'm pretty good with geography, but not amazing. So um, it's better to. It's more easy to understand decisions made in battle when you know the geography a bit. But yeah, I love channels like this. Great channel. Um, if they have any others, I'll probably check them out. Like this one right here. Get on that Discord, boys. Marshals, thank you. Letic7, Melkor, Emperor of Rome. As always, doing a great job. See you guys next time.